live from the city of Los Angeles. It is February 21st. It is on a Tuesday. Nonetheless, this is Drug Dealers to Businessmen Podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne, and this is the weekly tap in, and I'm tapping in. What is really, 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 really good, you guys? Uh, man, hold on one second, man. That's um, hold on one second. Tapping in, making sure you guys can hear me clearly. One second. all righty sorry about the delay just had a little minor little little technical difficulties but nonetheless what's good you guys make sure you guys put your city in there tap in put what city repping um if this is your first time here welcome if you're listening on the replay we certainly appreciate you tapping in make sure you guys subscribe also if you haven't left us a review please do so at your earliest convenience i know it's a lot i don't ask for much i don't but i try to extend my love to you guys so if you guys can extend it to me what's going on samuel <laughs> everything is beautiful brother everything is lovely so today man today is episode number 14 of season four man you know one thing i'll tell you guys man start whatever it is you got in the back of your mind started and you hear this from all most most successful people right they tell you this stuff they're like man look start <laughs> and they always say i wish i would have started earlier right because there's no right time to do anything we always are sitting there it's it's what's optimal right we never have enough money it's never the right time or if we have enough money we don't want to make the wrong decisions so we have that perceived risk thing going on <laughs> so I'm just telling you right now, because even like with this podcast, we ain't where we like want to be. You know what I'm saying? But we're, 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 let me rephrase that. We're not where we think we want to be, right? <laughs> because a lot of times you think you're supposed to be somewhere and there's other things that come along with that. So I'm OK with the position that we're in right now. That's that's real. Take your steps, right? Do not skip steps. One thing I will say, do not skip steps. <laughs> this episode is one of one you are perfect and that's what i'm talking about right we're not made like some i don't know how many times and we all grew up with them right we all grew up with somebody who essentially was a duplicate of somebody right and this is the thing about neighborhoods right everybody's little such and such right they have how many different name sex right i'm big such and such i'm big big such and such i'm little i'm baby i'm I'm tiny, I'm wolfy, I'm right? And you think about it and you're like, man, each one. Now, a lot of times in the case, you'll see, depending on where that line leads, right? There might have been the, the, the original cat, the big, might have been a monster, and then maybe one other one. The other ones in between might have been whatever's or whatever the case may be. And that's all the more the reason why you should do your own thing right you got to do your own thing who wants to be a duplicate when you when the original is available why would you want to be a duplicate of anything when the original is available i could see if the original wasn't available homie <laughs> what's going on sheree i could see if the original wasn't even a thing right but the original is available why would you choose something else for what it doesn't make any sense you know what i'm saying and well let me rephrase that because it does make sense in a certain instance right it's easy <laughs> it's really easy to do right it's all it's it's if somebody already set up the recipe somebody already said this is how we're gonna walk right this is how we're gonna dress these are the cars that we're gonna buy this is the house we're gonna go after right these are the type of females that we're gonna talk to this is the school we're gonna go to right that's easy it's easy to follow. It is really easy to follow, right? Which is why a lot of us are in that position, because it's easy. Now, the difficult side is deviating from that, finding yourself, understanding why you gravitate towards it, because people are magnetic. Don't get, no, 
there are some magnetic people in this world, right? So we got to respect that and what the magnetism that they bring and they bring out the best in a lot of people. So I'm not saying it's wrong to follow individuals. That's not what I'm saying because oftentimes we need a model or we're misguided, right? And the model that we do currently have in place is not leading us to where we'd like to be. So now we need a different model. So oftentimes we're drifting, right? Because we don't, and the whole time, it's almost like the Blue Sleep or anybody watched The Last Dragon. He's searching for the master the entire time. The whole time, the master is inside of him. And that's the same thing a lot of people don't realize about themselves and God. They're looking for God. I'm like, man, he lives with you. He's inside you. He never leaves you. But you always in search of somebody else. You want to give praise to somebody else. You want somebody else to be the savior, right? Because that's easy. It's difficult to look at yourself and say that I'm the one that can actually control all this, right? I'm, I'm the alchemist. I'm the one who can take my destiny in my own hand, right? I'm, I'm that, that person. That, that, with that power comes a tremendous amount of responsibility because you don't want to waste that gift. You know God gave it to you. You're one of one. There is no duplicates. There's no molds. He broke it right after he built you. That was it. Right. And your uniqueness. I was looking at that. Me and my wife are having a conversation about our kids. Right. And talking about how we see other kids. I had another parent talk to me about, man, when do they start to get focused? And I'm like, I have no idea. Because everybody's unique. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you see a lot of focused athletes or whatever. That's because their brothers focus. They had a model to follow. Right. And they made it. You know, your dad was played pro or whatever the case. These are all models to follow. So it makes it a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? So with that, yeah, they can they can do that. But should we compare our kids to other kids? I realized that I like to listen to books, right? I don't mind reading. I really like reading. I'll crack it open. I'll read. I'll spend time with it. But I can listen too, right? And I realized that if I would have had this opportunity when I was younger, my, my academic uh, um, uh, record, my academic uh, um, experience might have been completely different because everybody learns uniquely different one of the worst things they've done for us was give us standardized ass tests right and we look at our kids why aren't you passing this test because it was built for becky who loves to read and minds built like this so they designed this test for her now i got steve over here who's a creative you know this is what he does, right? And we need those creatives. They create music and they do all these different wonderful things for us. But we measure our children's success based on a standardized test that was built for a few people in the world. And we compare ourselves all the time. We always comparing ourselves, man, uh, I, man that's them. You got to appreciate, even if they, the way they built, I wish I could. Do you really wish you had that? Do you know what comes with that? Do you realize that some people are the most beautiful people on the outside, but got horrible guts? So do you want that, right? Do you really, really want that? Good question, right? Because that's, that's the key right there. I, do I want to be, you don't know what comes with being them. You just looking at it from the outside in a really, really, fast snapshot you don't know what their home like like rich pe people oh man i wish yeah i heard one study it was talking about that today one thing that being rich does is it gives you more free time it gives you more free time to either go nuts <laughs> right or create and be happy right it can give you both of those really depends on how you look at the situation how you approach it and more importantly how you take advantage of it Right. But that's really it. You know what I'm saying? Free time. But it doesn't necessarily make you happy. People always. Oh, man, if I I got no nah, rich people got problems, too. Man. It, they there's a, just look different. They still argue. They still have fights. People still get the police called on them. It's still you know what I'm saying they're not they're not immune to any of that stuff. Although we think that. Right. We think that these things are going to solve whatever issues that we have. Our problems are uniquely ours, right? Based on what God has planned for us. So these problems that we have are uniquely ours. 
they're for us. They're built and designed specifically for us. They don't fit anybody else. That's why when you lay your problems on somebody else, they can empathize to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? For real. They can empathize, empathize to a certain degree. They can't. Oh, man, I, man, you, but you can't. You don't understand, understand. So that's why it's so important not to take it personal, right? Like, man, my problems are my problem. I don't expect you to really understand. I got up this morning going to the gym, man, got hit with a phone call, straight drama. And in the moment, you're asking yourself, why me? Why can't I just be like all these other people that go in here? Right. And we make that assumption that they're just coming in there and they're having a great time at the gym. And they go home to a lovely big giant mansion with cook food and like they don't have their own shit. They do. Academics, they got their own problems, too. You think of PhDs, they papered up this. They, they everybody, everybody's in their own little world. And in that own little world, it might you your little world might look you might be envious of their little world. But when you get inside their little world, you realize, damn, this little world is just like my little world. And it is. Only thing usually changes are the players involved. Same minutia, <clears throat> same, you know, drama, same envy, same, you know, because the, the thing about it is you could say the same thing about rich folks, but there comes a, like, are you rich, rich, or are you rich, 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 right? <laughs> because there's levels to that. Are you like, are you uh, uh, 1800? We got 1800 money. Okay. Well, you rich, rich, rich. <laughs> right. So even if you was balling like in Beverly Hills, what are you like? Yeah, but there's people that trump that. There's sheiks that, that own, you know what I'm saying? So it's, there's levels to that. And, and that would make you miserable. Right. Because if you're looking at somebody else, you're like, even though, man, I'm balling, man, I got a, I got a yacht in the Marina. I got the, uh, I got a um, a three a three story sp spot Manhattan Beach, you know what I'm saying? But there's somebody who has that, and they got a house in New York, and they got a house in Spain. So now you're looking at your situation, even though it is gravy, right? It is it it is one of the most ideal situations that you can put yourself in when you look and compare it to somebody else, and not your unique self, not your unique experience. You start to try to merge experiences and compare yourself to others. That's when yours starts to not look like much. And we do the same thing with ourselves, right? We start to compare ourselves to others. So then it starts to look like we're not much, not much to us. Which, man, you could be, I, I, I had, I had to sit back and look at my resume, man, been fighting this uphill battle, but been taking flags the whole time. You dig what I'm saying? Accomplishing stuff the entire time. So sometimes we have to look at ourselves in our unique path and understand, don't look at it as a situation of why me, but why not you? What is this building in you? Because every time you hit a corner, every time God does something to you, it takes you through an experience, it should build something in you, right? I continuously fail a certain test. Certain family members of mine get under my skin immediately. And it's been going on for a long time. So now I understand. God's going to continue to take you through that test until you pass it. So over and over again, I get hit with things just like that. And I keep failing the same test. And my wife just sitting there looking at me like, you got to take the quiz again. <laughs> and I'm like, man, because I'm not, I'm not really understanding what God's trying to tell me. Right. I'm not embracing that message. And that's my problem. And a lot of our problems too. I don't know if you can relate. But oftentimes we're not embracing the message that God's given us. Like, homie, pass this test. You got. You don't want to be uh, problem free because you're going to run into something similar, and you're going to need to know how to handle it, and more importantly, maintain your peace of mind because that's everything. Once your peace of mind starts getting disturbed, everything else starts getting out of sync. So once it happens to you, that's why it's so important to set your foundation and your intention first thing in the morning. The reason why my world didn't get rocked too hard today is because I sat down and wrote my intentions, all of them. And once you do that, you build up a force so strong that no matter what comes, you foundationally set. You already said, I'm good. Nothing can move me. Not now. What? And you start to understand and God, okay. And it starts to become less and less. Problem's still there, 
but you have something in place now. I got my intentions. I already wrote those down. I'm already moving forward, right? Because when you get rocked, same thing in a fight, you get rocked, you're going to stand there or you're going to keep moving, right? You already should have a plan. Man, I know the enemy going to come with something. I know because I. this is what he does. This is what I do, though. Dig that one, right? This is what he does, but this is what I do. And the more you know how to battle, I, I keep telling y'all, it is a spiritual warfare for your mind. That's it. It doesn't get more complicated than that. Right? I teach consumer behavior where we're talking about attention. We're talking about affect how things affect us, what, what perception, what we use, our five senses, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And stimuli, right? There's certain levels of stimuli, differentiation, threshold, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff, right? Because everything's vying for our attention, including the enemy, not just businesses, right? There are, there are, you know, consumer packaged goods or whatever businesses that are trying to catch our attention, the Super Bowl, all that good stuff. But the enemy wants it too, because if I can get your attention off of what you're supposed to be focusing on, I got you. I got you. You ain't going to do shit ever, right? I can, I can keep throwing, make you think you're getting some, a little bit ahead. I'm going to throw this curve. He, he ain't going to see it coming. <laughs> right? The same curveball, right? You see fights and stuff. you like, man, this fool throwing the right hand religiously. How come he won't move? He sees it coming, doesn't he? Sometimes. And sometimes we see it coming. We know it's approaching us. And we sit there. Right? Bam. Get hit again. Bam. Bam. You're like, man, move. why don't he move? <laughs> Move, dog, because he doesn't have a plan for it. You don't have a plan for the right, it's going to keep molly whopping you. You don't have a plan for whatever the enemy comes with, it's going to keep molly whopping you. That's what he does, right? Understand that. But you're uniquely built. He's never seen anyone like you. He has the only thing he's basing it on is past behavior, right? It's almost like when you're talking about research, right? Primary data and secondary data. Primary data is the stuff we collect. That's live in the moment what we're collecting, right? Do, writing it down, surveys, et cetera, et cetera. Secondary data is the shit that already happened. Stuff in the past. This is already, this is already gone. That's what he's dealing with. He's dealing with your records. He knows what you've done, what you fell prey to in the past. That's what he's dealing with. He has no clue about what's popping in the future. He, he reading transcripts and you guys, we, we talked about the transcripts of life. That's what he reading. Let me, let me see what he, Oh, he got a D in this. Okay. 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 And that's how he thinks. Okay. I'm about to rock his world with this. He can get the transcripts. That's just public. <laughs> you dig it's public information, what you've been through. What isn't public information was between you and God and what you're getting ready to go through. That's the beautiful part about it, right? He only knows your past. He doesn't know what's been a pop. You could try to tell somebody, right? Because he sends them, right? I, I, I highly encourage you guys. What's the, the, the Denzel movie where he touches? Watch that movie. Because that's how the enemy rocks. It goes from place to place to place. It's not particularly one person. It's not one event. It's not one thing. It could be a series of things, right? It's like a thousand little cuts. Eventually, you'll bleed to death. But he's going to keep slicing. Sometimes you ain't even going to feel him. Like, Damn, I thought I, that's what I scratched myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did I, what, did I, haunt me. But understand, you have a mission. And the gifts that you've been given, how, even because we can't recognize them, right? We have our Google glasses on, or I, I'll call them our goofy glasses on. Well, we see ourselves worse than we actually are, but we see other people better than they actually are. Those are the goofy glasses, right? And we always have them on. We just put them on and, ooh, we jocking this cat. Man, you don't know, man, <laughs> right? And the older you get, I think, and the more experiences that you have in your life, you understand this game. You don't move off of stuff. You're like, man, I make that assumption. That's good for you, homeboy. Like, I like lowriders, man. I love lowriders. I don't want one. Why? Because I don't have a place to put one, first of all. My bus sits out there. <laughs> Nobody bothers it. You know what I mean? I had some on these and all that. 
it'll be gone in like two days. So I can live vicariously through someone, right? I don't need to own that. That's on that. That looks good on you, homeboy. Oh, you going to Africa? Cool. That looks amazing. Send me the pictures. Why? I don't like long flights. <laughs> I'm tall. I'm. That's just. And I'm, you don't want to, do, homie. That's on you. I like tropical shit. <laughs> Africa's tropical. Yeah, but it's like a twenty-hour flight, homie. So it, I'ma just drive. I got everything in my car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this is me, right? This is me. This is what I like. I like to sit down and read. I like to sit down and do other stuff. I like to go hiking. I like to go think. I like to take rides on the coast, right? I like certain foods, right? <laughs> I like experiences. I like certain conversations. You got to embrace your uniqueness, right? And, and, and don't compromise it for anyone. Why would you compromise that? Now, you do have to get along with your significant other. You can't disrespect. But you still need to be in your individual, whoever that it was, because that's what attracted them as well. So embrace those differences, right? Your 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 quote unquote flaws. Everybody has them. Right? Everybody has them. So nobody's uh, some people are covering them up better. You may not see them. Well, they see them. Oh my God, I hate my hands. You're like, damn, your hands are really nice. Oh, these are the work perception how do you perceive them and what is she or he or she comparing themselves to because that's usually when you give yourself a lower grade you get some oh i want those why you want they stuff you don't you don't see yourself in the mirror as as that <laughs> you're that all that right and you need to embrace that uniqueness right and be happy with the gift that god gave you whether it's how short you are height tall doesn't matter that's a gift people talk about man oh, i'm small man you could fit everything to at the store they always got something for you so you can stay fly i gotta go into the big and tall section all the time and this stuff is not fly yeah i can grab a something off the shelf but i can't fly on an airplane comfortably not unless i spend six bands for a first class so there's pros and cons to life there's pros and cons to being who you are why even focus on the cons? Because they're not cons. Compared to what? Right? What are we comparing it to? Well, I'm I'm kind of you, you what? If you didn't imagine if you there was nobody to compare it to, you'd just be who you were. That's the danger right there, though. It's that comparison, man. Oh, that's a dream killer, man. If I ain't never seen one. Let me compare myself to somebody else. It diminishes your dreams instantly. Diminishes them. Diminishes your accomplishments. You don't know how somebody, you pull up next to somebody, damn, I want that. You don't know, you don't know how they got that, man. Dad could have been a secretary and happened to just be messing with the, the dude's wife and inherited something. Now the son's riding around in a Bentley. But you thinking that, man, he busted it. You have no idea what people have. And it's not, as Les Brown says, it's none of your spiritual business, right? <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Les Brown, though, homie. It's none of your spiritual business. It really isn't. Mind your spiritual business, dog. Focus on your blessings, right? Because they're in abundance. You got a pocket full of them, a refrigerator full of them, a bag full of them. If you listening to this podcast, you're blessed. Period. You got an internet connection. You got a, either a cell phone. <laughs> you you're you're ahead of the, the majority of the world. But if you look over here to the left and to the right, you'd be like, "All I have is the internet. This is it." No, you have more than that. And I took me a while to figure that out, right? Because that's all I did. Because I didn't have anything. Nobody was telling me I was doing a good job because no one's seen this done before. So they didn't know how to tell me anything. But keep going. Okay, well, you just keep going. But they couldn't, nobody could really advise me because I'm going on a path that nobody's been on. So if there's if you're going on a path that nobody's been on, how the hell could they give you any directions? They can't tell you where to turn left, right. 
detour. All I can say is, man, have a safe day. Like they say, have a safe trip. But call me when you get there. That's what they on. And that's what I, I'm, and I'm climbing. I'm trying to try, embrace your uniqueness. That's that, the, in, in the more books that I read about that, the dream giver, um, Bruce Wilkinson, um, um, another Bruce Wilkinson, the secrets of the vine, uh, the alchemist, all of these where you had to go set out and they talk about journeys. Right. And the, 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 the unique things that make your story interesting, the failures, right? I remember my bus breaking down on Crenshaw as soon as we got it at like four o'clock. Best publicity in the world. We got it because <laughs> it was wrapped. But man, everybody was cussing me out and blowing at me. That's a part of my history. That's a part of our story. Yeah, during the time, yeah, it sucked, man. It was like three, four hundred to get it told. <laughs> yeah, that sucked. But it's a part of our history. It makes it makes the story better because if there was no obstacles, then how the hell is it a success story? It's not a success story. That's just some people talking about some bullshit. But when you got peaks and valleys and we can relate, man, I could talk about how many times my car got repo, bill collectors, messing up uh, recipes, making the chicken too salty, not putting enough salt on it, uh, buying bad hair. Um, I I can go on and on and on about these business stories, right? Because those are, everybody wants to talk about the success. I'm six figures. I'm seven figures. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you guys how this shit really works. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you about how losses and things like that. And my wife can sit up there and tell you half the stories because she got to hear them all night. How something didn't go right, something didn't go wrong, whatever. So that's, but those, if you're writing them down and documenting them, that's your story. That's your journey. Nip said it was a marathon, right? This is a marathon. We run in for a minute. We're not looking and stopping at the 18th mile, patting ourselves on the back and do 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 do. Ah, we I, I gotta tell you how my my feet is bleeding, how my nipples got raw, right? I'm talking marathon conversation. Not just the trophy, because that's that's I think I it was a less one of them cats, Les Brown and Travis Smiles, was talking about Gerald Albright. It was either Gerald Albright or no, it was uh, James Ingram when he talked about his award. Right? <laughs> he was like, "Man, it's just an award. I don't. It's the work. It's the journey. Right? It's the mistakes that build character. Right? It's not the perfect smile. It's the gap in your teeth that build character. Right? If everything's perfect, then who are you? That's a good question." I've been on Paul Robeson, man, dude, still on him, man, impressive. You hear him talk, 15 languages, Russian, Czechoslovakia. He would sing, he would go to these countries and sing in their language, their folk song. <laughs> and he was, I mean, athlete, I mean, the dude was, I mean, yo, that's who you, that's, you want, you going, if, <laughs> if you are going to copy somebody, <laughs> get your Paul Robinson on, right? 15 languages, y'all? Uh, an attorney, an actor, orator? You look at some of the old uh, movies he was in, you're like, how they let this cat in there? Homie. High IQ intelligence, no joke, sang at the deep veritone. Right, that's, that's, that's Paul Robinson. But that's a thing of beauty to even, if you're going to model yourself after someone, Model yourself about how he went about being unique. You don't have to model yourself after his path, but you can model yourself about the way he went about life. He embraced a lot of different things, right? He understood where he was in terms of position as a black man. He understood that, but he also understood that I can do a lot if I learn how to, one, do what God's giving me, my gift, and figure out how to get past these barriers and still give it to the world. And they embraced him, right? Europe and all, America was trying to tear it on him. It looked the dude up. I'm surprised they, they got like a 30-minute documentary on him. That's about it. And, it. and it is a fantastic story. Hopefully they talk about it some more. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? But we are that unique. We walk a certain way. If our, if our leg, I remember homies used to have legs shorter, arms shorter. 
those are all gifts. It's not, you wasn't, nobody is deformed. Nobody's no mutant, no none of that. Everybody is unique. Even twins are different. <laughs> We're born a minute apart. Yeah, you guys are completely different. So what does that mean for us? What do we do about that? How do we make it to, how do we, how do we make our uniqueness more of an advantage? Because a lot of times what happens is we have this group think or, you know, social groups that we have to fit into these things. And if we don't, we're ostracized. So one of the things that I realized about myself is that because I'm unique, I don't, I, man, I ain't never fit, I ain't never fit in with the homies. I ain't never fit in at school with these cats. I ain't never fit in any group. None. And that's crazy, but it but but it doesn't surprise me. Because whenever there's rules to conform and it doesn't fit with my soul, I don't conform. Right? I'm uniquely different. I'm one of the only professors that has a podcast like this. They trip out because they're like they they want to, oh man, you must be talking about keys and the complete opposite, homie. The complete opposite. So even if my department chairs heard my podcast, you would understand what I'm saying. This is 100% motivation, period. I use my unique stories to uplift my homeboys and homegirls, yeah. But we ain't talking about no work. We don't need to. For what? <laughs> we it, the, the real ones on here? Man, come on, man. I, that, man. We ain't doing that. <laughs> So I embrace who I am, man. I, I know who I am. I know I'm unique. I know I'm a nerd. I told you guys that a couple episodes ago. I'm a nerd. I like reading uh, articles, textbooks, stuff like that. I don't like hanging out. I'm not a club head. I'd rather go on a hike than go, go out on the town at night. I've done that my whole teenage, 20s, all that stuff. It didn't do nothing for me but give me a headache. So now I'm different. I'm okay with that. I embrace who I am. I embrace the speed of my success, which is a difficult thing to do, right? Because reading success, that was one of the things that I hurt myself doing too, is I was constantly looking at these entrepreneur type magazines and they'll make you feel some type of way. I'm reading an article. I mean, I'm reading chapter five, which talks about uh, motivation. And it talked about how Facebook sometimes makes us feel worse. When we go to Facebook, we look around, we don't feel better about ourselves. Right. Instagram, same thing. We don't feel better about ourselves. We're looking at somebody's snapshot of their best life. Doesn't make us feel fantastic. Right. So when you think about that, why, right, what does make us happy? Right. I'm reading a book. It's called, I think it's, hold on, let me, let me pull it up. Um, and I, and I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that book, I think I was telling you guys about a while ago, um, which is about Japanese. It's the Japanese way of happiness. It's called, uh, Ik, ikigai, something like that, ikigai. But it talked about happiness, right? And it talked about some of the things that they do. One of the things they do is they stay busy and they never retire. And I've always been a f believer in that, right? There's no such thing as retirement because we're already acting like we are retired, right? But I, I, I read books like that. None of my homeboys read books like that. None of them. I haven't got a book suggestion from my homies yet. You know what I'm saying? Well, some of them, the one that just said, tapping it as my relative though, but other than that, for the most part, nah. And that's okay. I'm not I'm not mad at the homies. I'm not saying come send me suggestions. That, that's not what kind of relationship we got. But the thing, what I am saying is, I understand my uniqueness and I'm not going to stop doing it, right? You make people conform to you or not but don't bend, right? It's, it's, now, there's a difference between getting new information, right, and changing your mind, right? Wise men get new information that change their mind. You don't have to hold on to a certain way of thinking just because it was something that you grew up with. I grew up with a certain way, and I'm looking at a lot of the cats who made it too, and I'm like, hey, homie, I don't know if your advice was stellar. <laughs> I don't know if that was the best thing that you, you know what I'm saying? But that's, and I, and I understand they, they only knew what they knew at that time and only could tell me what they knew. So I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? But I've made my moves. I understood. Break off, dog. You different. And when you get spared by God, because I've been around a lot of homies where homies is getting killed and Cass is going to jail, and I get spared. 
then you got to understand that you have a unique obligation to God. To one, take advantage of all your gifts, all of them, because you have them. And if you waste them, just think of you having to come back to tell somebody that, that the giver of life, the giver of everything you've had in your life, that you didn't do shit with it. That you said, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to just be regular. God's like, nah, I got extraordinary things for you, man. I I, I got you. Look, we're going to do X, Y, Z. Da, 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 da. Nah. No, you can learn, man. You can find out. Because you can learn whatever you want right now. Everything is possible. Everything was within, within a Google search and a couple other steps, and you can find out. There's literally nothing you can't find out and teach yourself. And if you choose to sit there and waste your talents, you wasted your talents because there's somebody somewhere in the world wish they had the same opportunity as you do, but you're sitting there. You're not going to move. You're going to just sit there and wait and wait and wait. And that talent is just sitting there like, man, do something with me, dog. You see me sitting here, you know I'm ready to go. That's like having a killer that can't kill nothing, right? He, he waiting to go and you just like, man, just sit here, dog. Just sit here. Ah, we gonna go to a park. He like, nah, I wanna go hunting. He like, nah, he like, nah, just sit here. That's what God looking at you like. You just gonna sit there? You can't, you ain't gonna do, I gave you, I gave you this. You, you know how to do this. You got a brain. You got two eyes, man. There's some people, I didn't get two eyes, man, and they working it better than you. There's some people, man, I cut their legs off, man, just to see if they can make it, man, and they working it better than you. Like, there's two people, there's people that I cut off all their legs and their arms, just left their brain, and they doing more shit than you. You just going to sit there? That waitress been waiting on you to take your order? You ain't gave her no order? God's sitting there looking at you like, man, I done slid you all this stuff, and you just going to sit there? I done gave you a whole box of tools, and the car is still sitting there with no gas in it. So I gave you more than what you needed. And you won't even put no gas in the car. I done gave you everything. And you won't even move. So when God's having those conversations with you, I know what I'm going to tell him. Man, I maximize it. Man, everything I can get my hands on, dog. You know it, man. My YouTube was crazy. I'm I'm, I'm taking, man, I'm just taking notes. I'm buying books. I'm on you, God. Because I know I got the talent. I'm just trying to. I'm tying stuff out. You know what I'm saying? I'm testing my knowledge. I'm going where you leading me. And he opening doors. Oh, he's opening doors, dog. So sometimes you got to step out there, man, and people will pull you. For example, we've been trying talking about getting this kitchen thing going, this and this and that. Lady put something out, came straight to us, right? Other people tried to, we got on that. She made me stretch a little bit more. Hey, you're going to need to get X, Y, Z. So now we stretched a little bit more, put us up on something else, and it's going to lead us to something else. And I'm basically saying that because it sounded like it was a bunch of gibberish, but it wasn't. Her being introduced to her, she's teaching us about the restaurant game. She already has one. So we're learning that, right? So when you, when you make an agreement with God, one, you got to be patient. Two, He's going to send it to you, and it's going to be not, as they say with Steph Curry, it's going to be Steffordless. You're not going to have to put forth any effort. It's going to come to you. You're going to, you got to attract these things, right? So knowing who you are individually, not because when you follow somebody else and you're acting like somebody else, <coughs> you, you might see them get blessed. You're like, well, where's mine at? You're too close to them. You ain't being your own individual, right? You can't get none of their blessing. You might be close to be like, oh, man, we're, like like uh, Craig on Friday. Well, where am I at? Right? Breakfast. Where? Nah. You got to get your own, dog. And when you get your own, you can walk around here like this. Right? It's going to feel better. It's going to smell better. It's going to taste better. Because it's yours, right? You didn't have to, I didn't have to coattail to you, homie. I know who I am. I know how I walk. I know I, I know who God made. He made an individual. Ain't nobody like me. I just tell Picasso, man, you see somebody walk down this hallway, take a picture and a video, homie, because you ain't never going to see a walk like this again. Not not like this. It may some may be different, some might be funkier, some maybe 
it don't matter. But you ain't gonna see one like this. When you hear somebody talk, you ain't never gonna hear nobody talk like this. They may sound similar. They may have a different type of game. They may, but not like this. And you gotta embrace your individuality, right? You gotta. They talk about in the in the um in the twenty two immutable laws of marketing, right? The law of categories being the first is something. I'm the first and the last, dog. Of this. Now, my son may be a version of me, but he got 50-50 DNA. There's only going to be one like this. My brother ain't like me. And you got to understand that you ain't walking with a sense of being conceited or, or hubris, but you walking in your individual path with your individual blessings. And that is enough to change the world because I'm embracing my uniqueness with this podcast. No other podcast like this. Some may be similar. Some may be different. I ain't going to say I'm better than anyone. I ain't going to say I'm worse. I'm going to say I'm giving you what God told me to give you. And can't nobody deliver like me. That will conclude our weekly tap in for this week. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Those who, um, so I told, so what I'm, what I'm reading right now, hold on, hold on. Wanted to show you guys that. Um, okay. Yeah. So you guys what I'm reading right now. I don't want to ever leave y'all out of that. So let's see. Yeah, let's go there. All right. So I'm showing you guys. Ika gay. I don't hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a short book. Um, I got it on um shout out to my sister in law. She got me a Barnes Noble gift card for my for Christmas. And I bought an audio book. So I've been listening to it. Um, one of the things, just kind of give you guys some highlights, some of the things that it talked about is only eat till you're 80% full. Don't retire. Connect with nature. Um, walk a lot. Be part of community. Um, some of those things that they they talk about within that book. So it's a really good book. It's Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. I've been reading some good Japanese books. My other one was on um, forest bathing. And then, of course, the Marie Kondo stuff. So, man, I, I get it from everywhere, dog doesn't matter. I don't discriminate when it comes to information, and you shouldn't either. Let me know what you guys want to talk about the next time. I'm tapping out.